What if everything we thought we understood about fueling vehicles wasn't just outdated, but entirely wrong, completely unnecessary, and dangerously misdirected? What if the answer to decades of automotive pollution, noise, and infrastructure struggles wasn't another expensive battery or deeper oil well, but something astonishingly simple water? Water, the quietest, cleanest, most overlooked substance around us. Now whispers of a new frontier through the soundless hum of something radical happening beneath the surface of the auto industry. And at the center of this revolution stands Toyota, a company already famous for bringing hybrid technology to the masses, now risking everything by taking a wildly bolder step into the unknown. This isn't a pipe dream whispered in garages or a Kickstarter fantasy about perpetual motion. It's real, tangible, and already built. Toyota is challenging not just technology, but the very assumption that energy has to come at a cost to the planet, to our lungs, or to our future. With every puff of smoke from exhaust pipes and every painful spike at the gas pump, it becomes harder to ignore that the current systems, gasoline and electric alike, are still failing. Look at any city. Smog hanging over neighborhoods, exhaust pluming from tailpipes, engines roaring under stress, and yet we've normalized it all. Behind the noise, something quieter is taking shape, one that dares to answer a question few in the automotive industry have been willing to ask. What if we didn't need to burn anything at all? Globally, over 1.4 billion vehicles churn through roads and freeways, and the vast majority still guzzle gasoline or diesel as their lifeblood. That number isn't just a statistic. It's a weight on our atmosphere, our cities, and our bodies, with air pollution near highways increasing risks of respiratory illness, heart disease, and even cancer. While electric vehicles were meant to be the antidote, the truth of their production paints a more complicated picture. One filled with mining pits, geopolitical tensions, and environmental compromises. Electric cars are undeniably cleaner at the tailpipe because there is no tailpipe, but the problem lies behind the curtain in the mining for rare metals, the hours-long charging, and the patchy charging grid still under construction. Lithium, cobalt, and nickel, the backbone of EV batteries, are mined from regions plagued by poor labor conditions, environmental destruction, and in too many cases, child labor. And though electric motors may purr in silence, the energy that powers them often comes from dirty grids, fossil-fueled plants, and distant mines with invisible scars. Even the promise of long-distance travel falters under the current EV framework, as drivers must plan their routes meticulously around charging stations and wait times that challenge convenience. Toyota saw all this and decided the answer wasn't to double down on batteries, but to explore an entirely different pathway, hydrogen. Hydrogen, once written off as a dream too delicate, too expensive, and too unstable, is now re-entering the spotlight because the problems it once faced are being solved, quietly and effectively. What sets hydrogen apart isn't just its cleanliness. It's its scalability, its fast refueling time, its lightness, and its potential to replace fuel across industries far beyond personal vehicles. Unlike batteries that grow heavier with capacity, hydrogen systems remain light and versatile, offering advantages for heavy-duty applications like buses, trucks, trains, and even planes. Toyota's commitment hasn't been a reactionary pivot. It's been a slow, methodical, and determined long game, developing hydrogen tech while most other automakers poured resources into battery-only systems. Their goal isn't just to create a cleaner car. It's to dismantle the assumptions surrounding how cars must function and prove that a different future isn't only possible, but preferable. At the core of this shift is a process called electrolysis, the method of using electricity to split water into its base elements, hydrogen and oxygen. When powered by renewables like solar or wind, this process becomes not only efficient but entirely green, producing no carbon emissions and requiring no mining. Toyota's innovation lies in improving this process, making it faster, cheaper, and more scalable through breakthroughs in materials, science, and high-temperature systems. Their system stores the extracted hydrogen in specialized carbon-reinforced tanks and uses it later in a chemical reaction that, instead of burning, simply generates electricity. In a fuel cell, Hydrogen reacts with oxygen in the air, producing a steady flow of electricity to power the car and leaving behind nothing but harmless water vapor. This means no smog, no soot, no carbon monoxide, just a soft mist evaporating into the air, 
leaving the road behind cleaner than when the car arrived. Toyota has already put this theory into motion with the Mirai, a sleek sedan that's more than a concept. It's a production-ready, road-approved vehicle running on compressed hydrogen. Launched first in 2014 and continually refined, the latest Mirai model can travel over 400 miles on a single fill, takes less than five minutes to refuel, and delivers smooth, high-performance driving. It has 182 horsepower, 300 newton meters of torque, and rides like a luxury EV but without the dead weight of a massive battery or the logistical limitations of a charging station. Under the hood is a fuel cell stack engineered with decades of research, surrounded by safety sensors, lightweight composites, and thermal management systems that rival modern aircraft. Toyota's engineers didn't just design a new car, they designed an ecosystem, a cycle where water becomes fuel and fuel becomes steam, looping without pollution or waste. Where past water-powered car claims fell apart, often being exposed as scams or unscientific fantasies, Toyota has rooted its work in laboratory-verified chemistry, robust patents, and working products. Instead of promising a magic system that splits water on the go, Toyota's method focuses on producing hydrogen in advance, storing it efficiently, and using it in a practical, controlled manner. This grounded approach separates Toyota's work from the snake oil of the past and proves that real science, when paired with industrial ambition, can achieve what once seemed impossible. And the implications stretch far beyond personal transport. Toyota is using hydrogen to power city buses in Tokyo, to fuel backup generators for events like the Olympics, and to test integration in long-haul shipping and aviation. Hydrogen, unlike solar and wind, doesn't care about weather, it can be stored for months, transported over distances, and used on demand to stabilize energy grids or fuel infrastructure. The biggest remaining barrier is infrastructure. Not enough hydrogen stations exist yet to make it universally convenient, but Toyota is investing in partnerships to change that rapidly. From California to Germany to Japan, alliances are forming between automakers, governments, and energy providers to accelerate the rollout of hydrogen refueling networks. Toyota understands that to make hydrogen work, they need more than cars. They need supply chains, stations, standards, and public trust, and they're building it brick by brick. Each hydrogen tank on the Mirai is wrapped in carbon fiber, pressure tested, and monitored by a sophisticated array of leak detection sensors to ensure safety in even extreme conditions. The system has emergency shutdown protocols, venting systems, and temperature controls that make hydrogen cars not only viable but arguably safer than gasoline vehicles in crashes. The refueling experience mirrors that of traditional gas stations. Pull up, connect the nozzle, and within minutes, the vehicle is ready for hundreds of miles of emission-free travel. The experience feels like a luxury EV drive. Quiet, smooth, responsive, but without the inconvenience of waiting hours for a full battery or worrying about rare earth mineral supply chains. Toyota's strategy isn't to create a luxury niche, but to develop a blueprint that other industries can follow. One where hydrogen isn't an exotic experiment, but a standard part of the energy mix. Governments are beginning to take notice, funding pilot programs, green hydrogen facilities, and national hydrogen strategies to reduce carbon emissions across sectors. Competitors, once skeptical, are watching Toyota closely and slowly beginning to hedge their bets with hydrogen prototypes of their own, signaling a shift in momentum. The difference now is scale, the tools are better, the science is sound, and the global need for clean, fast, sustainable energy solutions has never been greater. Toyota's quiet persistence might soon pay off, and if it does, the automotive industry could find itself rewriting its story with water as both the beginning and the end of motion. The journey from concept to reality is never smooth, especially when the concept threatens to upend a century-old status quo deeply rooted in fossil fuels, battery factories, and global supply chains. Yet Toyota isn't just chasing a cleaner engine. It's crafting an entirely new relationship between humanity and mobility, a relationship that demands we rethink how we generate, store, and distribute energy. To do this, they're not only building cars, but building trust a far more elusive commodity in a world that has seen too many overhyped promises and too little follow-through. From fraudulent water-powered claims in the 1990s to questionable inventions that claim to defy the laws of thermodynamics, the history of alternative car fuel has been riddled with deception. 
So Toyota knew from the start that transparency, repeatability, and hard science would be their only path forward if they wanted the world to take hydrogen seriously. They opened their labs, published their research, and invited scrutiny. Because they weren't selling miracles, they were engineering progress rooted in physics, chemistry, and pragmatism. Toyota doesn't claim to have reinvented the laws of energy, but rather to have optimized a known process to a level where it becomes practical for mass adoption. Electrolysis is the key, a process older than the automobile itself, now revitalized by smarter materials, cleaner energy sources, and a global urgency to move beyond combustion. High temperature electrolysis, in particular, reduces energy input by taking advantage of industrial heat sources or renewable surpluses, slicing the energy cost of hydrogen production dramatically. New ceramic membranes and alternative catalysts reduce reliance on expensive metals like platinum or iridium, making hydrogen production more cost-effective and scalable. These aren't distant theories, they're working systems, with prototype plants already producing hydrogen cleanly and efficiently in pilot programs across Japan and beyond. And once produced, hydrogen becomes a uniquely flexible asset. It can be compressed, liquefied, stored for months, or converted back into electricity whenever needed. This positions hydrogen not just as a fuel, but as an energy carrier, a battery that doesn't degrade, leak, or require toxic disposal at end of life. That flexibility opens the door to applications far beyond personal transportation, including commercial vehicles, public transit, emergency backup systems, and even home power supply. In Tokyo, hydrogen buses already ferry passengers with quiet confidence, emitting nothing but steam and challenging diesel's dominance in city transit. At sporting events like the Olympics, hydrogen-powered generators quietly lit stadiums and facilities, proving that entire infrastructures could run without a whiff of carbon. In Thailand, bio-waste is being used to generate hydrogen, combining agricultural innovation with automotive transformation to solve two problems with one solution. In Germany and California, hydrogen refueling stations are multiplying slowly but steadily, establishing beachheads in a world built around gasoline pumps and EV chargers. But infrastructure is still the elephant in the room. The hurdle hydrogen must clear before it can truly compete at scale, and Toyota knows this better than anyone. That's why their partnerships extend beyond automakers, reaching into energy utilities, governments, and logistics firms to lay the foundations of a hydrogen economy. These partnerships aren't symbolic. They involve real investments, real construction, and real policy advocacy aimed at accelerating the hydrogen transition. The dream is a seamless experience. Refuel your hydrogen car in minutes, drive for hundreds of miles, and never worry about finding the next station. The architecture for that future is being built layer by layer, through public-private alliances, international trade agreements, and local pilot zones where hydrogen leads. Toyota is investing not only in the cars, but in the hydrogen itself, experimenting with decentralized production models that use solar farms or wind turbines to produce fuel on-site. This decentralized model reduces transportation costs and boosts energy independence, especially valuable in regions with unstable power grids or expensive fuel imports. In this vision, Homes and buildings become microenergy hubs, with solar panels powering electrolyzers that split water into hydrogen by day and fuel cells turning it into electricity by night. In this future, cars are more than vehicles, they are power banks, capable of storing and distributing energy back to homes or the grid, creating a circular energy system with minimal waste. Toyota's hydrogen ecosystem envisions a world where excess renewable energy isn't lost but stored, and mobility becomes integrated with our broader energy infrastructure. And in a world reeling from climate change, geopolitical tension, and energy scarcity, that kind of resilience is more than innovation. It's necessity. The promise of hydrogen is not that it is perfect, but that it may be good enough to move us past the point of no return, away from combustion, and towards something sustainable. That's why Toyota isn't positioning hydrogen against EVs, but alongside them, as a complementary pathway where both solutions coexist and serve different needs. Short-distance commuters may still prefer battery EVs, but freight haulers, airlines, and rural drivers need the range, refueling speed, and scalability that hydrogen offers. And by investing in both, Toyota hedges against a polarized future, offering options instead of absolutes, 
pathways instead of prescriptions. The real breakthrough isn't just technological, it's philosophical because it acknowledges that no single solution can save the world, but many working together just might. Toyota's Mirai isn't a token car. It's a statement of intent, showing what happens when legacy engineering is paired with bold ambition and relentless iteration. With each new version, the Mirai becomes lighter, stronger, safer, and cheaper, crossing the threshold from novelty to normalcy. And as that transformation continues, it becomes easier to imagine a world where hydrogen-powered cars are as ubiquitous as hybrids are today. Critics often point to the chicken and egg problem. No one buys hydrogen cars because there are no stations, and no stations are built because there are no hydrogen cars. Toyota's answer is to break that cycle by force, build the car, build the stations, build the partnerships, and trust that the demand will follow as people experience the benefits. They're not alone in this bet. Hyundai, Honda, and a growing list of global automakers are cautiously entering the hydrogen race, signaling that this is no longer a one-company experiment. Meanwhile, governments from South Korea to the EU are pumping billions into hydrogen research, subsidies, and infrastructure, seeing it as essential to achieving climate targets. Hydrogen's role isn't to replace everything, but to fill the gaps EVs can't, to clean up sectors batteries can't reach, and to offer resilience when the grid fails. It offers portability where wires don't go, stability where wind doesn't blow, and long-term storage where solar doesn't shine. The stakes couldn't be higher. The transportation sector accounts for over 24% of global emissions, and without bold action, that number will only climb. Hydrogen offers a unique chance to cut that curve, not by asking people to give up convenience, but by giving them a better alternative. Imagine a world where your car fuels in minutes, runs without emissions, and helps stabilize your neighborhood's energy grid during blackouts. Imagine logistics fleets that move goods across continents without burning a single drop of diesel, powered instead by clean, storable gas derived from water and wind. Imagine city buses that leave no soot in their wake, ferries that glide across rivers without oil slicks, and industrial machines that hum instead of roar. This is the world Toyota is betting on, not because it's easy, but because it may be the only future left that still offers growth without guilt. They know the road will be hard, the skeptics loud, and the competition fierce, but they also know that history favors those who prepare while others hesitate. And if they're right, the hydrogen engine won't be remembered as a side project. It will be seen as the blueprint for post-carbon transportation. The most powerful, Revolutions don't arrive with explosions. They arrive in silence, in vapor, in chemistry turned into motion. The hydrogen revolution has begun not with a bang but with a whisper. The soft hiss of hydrogen flowing into a tank. The mist trailing behind a moving car. The silence of an engine that leaves nothing behind. It's a revolution that asks for belief but rewards it with proof. A car that doesn't pollute. A fuel that doesn't destroy. And a future that doesn't compromise. Toyota's gamble is that if people experience this future once, they'll never want to go back to smoke, noise, or delay. That's why they're putting wheels on the ground now. Vehicles already driving through the streets of Japan, California, and Europe. Not waiting for perfect, but delivering better. They know that revolutions don't start in labs, they start on roads, in driveways, in decisions made by drivers who want more than the status quo. And as these hydrogen-powered vehicles quietly expand their reach, the world begins to change, not through disruption, but through demonstration. A demonstration that water isn't just life, it might just be movement, economy, and hope. And if Toyota succeeds, the future of transportation won't just be electric or efficient, it'll be elemental. Because the next chapter of mobility might not run on oil or lithium, but on the most ancient element in the universe, harnessed at last for modern purpose. So the question isn't whether hydrogen can power a car. The question is whether we're ready to let it power the future.